Now, the upcoming series of The Crown has come under intense criticism due to its portrayal of the royal family. Dame Judi Dench has called for a disclaimer to be added to the show for the sake of a family and a nation so recently bereaved. And former Prime Minister John Major has dismissed the series as a barrel load of malicious nonsense. In light of the events of the last 12 months, perhaps I have more to reflect on than most. Have royal scandals damaged the country's reputation? They won't go quietly. Our battle till the end. How did it come to this? Still with us in the studio is the Times political sketch writer Quentin Letts and a warm welcome to historical novelist, I'm a fangirl, Philippa Gregory. Quentin, do you think it's a bit soon after the death of Her Majesty for Netflix to be screening something as sensitive as this? Uh, basically, Nadine, I'm a live and let live person and I also dislike any sort of constraint on freedom of speech. Uh, but that shouldn't stop us saying that um, this is the behaviour of uh, malicious scavengers uh, and that Netflix, or at least the, the Crown people, are behaving like, um, like vultures. But they are, we should see them not as vultures, perhaps. We should see them as, as ticks or fleas on the hide of a magnificent leviathan, uh, a great sleek bear that is the royal family or is that it is monarchy. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're a small uh, TV outfit. Who watches Netflix? And um, uh, I think, you know, just let them have their bit of... Uh, my, their little minor bit of uh, drama. But what and, about... and it is a drama. It is a drama. So... Yeah, but what about the boys? No, Prince William said that... Well, that's where that you get into... That day was the hardest day of his life. This is and... where you get into what a former... Um, there was a man called Lord McGregor who was in charge of press complaints, and he talked once about dabbling in people's souls. And this is where you get into slightly difficult waters, because, yes, this is a fiction, and, you know, fiction has uh, a very important part to play in our lives and in our art and our culture. But at the same time, it's fiction based on drama, and it's so recent that that's where you start treading into these slightly sort of... Uh, well, what about dangerous... disclaimer, Quentin? You know, This England with Kenneth Branagh had a disclaimer on the front. That said, at the beginning of every episode, this is fiction. Well, does that... I mean, They're only to going be... to put it on the trailer, not on the actual programme, on the episodes. Do you not think... Why would they put it on the trailer? Why wouldn't they put it on the episodes that air? Well, I think you probably have to be a bit stupid if you don't understand The Crown is based... Uh, but is, don't, is, 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 That's is a fiction. Thing. Well, don't. don't. They, they think it's a documentary. I don't know. Perhaps they should also have a disclaimer saying that, we, you know, we, Netflix, employ Prince Harry. So how could he possibly be upset about this? Ah, uh, you know... <laughs> Good tricky well, they don't Quentin. actually employ him, do they? Well, they give him loot. Well, he's made... They're making a documentary. <laughs> Quite a lot of They're it, not actually yeah. employing them. But do you not think they Spondulics should... Spondulics are involved in the making of that programme. But there is, there is a build-up of pressure for Netflix to put well, a disclaimer on the front. Do you think they should bow to that pressure? Uh, will they bow to pressure for, from Sir John Major? I think they might, possibly might, might ignore him. Um, but they have, uh, they have put it on the trailer already, so we could see... We could see movement. I don't know. I, 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 think, I think this is a, this is a hoo-ha, and, and we enjoy getting upset about it. And it is a bit unseemly. It's unsporting. It's unkind. But it's... It's well, fiction. Philippa, and, what and about fiction, you? Fiction can be unkind. And, fi and you know, Philippa, I've read all your novels. So, um, do you think that it's wrong that the royal family don't... I mean, you wrote about an amazing novel about Elizabeth I, but this, the royal family today, they don't have a right of reply. It's not a historical documentary. It's very much involving members of the royal family who are alive today. Do you think it's wrong that they don't have the right to reply? Of course they have the right to reply. They just have to speak up. Nobody's stopping them speaking out. When they want to speak out, they do. When they want to sue people, they do. They have every right to reply. But this isn't a factual account that they can sue for libel over, though I would imagine that, depending on how close Netflix gets the wind, there might be things that would look a, a so apparently libelous. But close... nobody thinks it's real. I mean, if you show me one person who thinks this is history, then we'll have a completely different discussion. Because I, I what we're doing, a lot of people we're do. setting up... I think this is how a lot of people do view the royal family. One I mean, and I think that's a credit to the writers well, and the director, actually. Well, everybody is complaining about the so fact real. that it doesn't carry a disclaimer. Do you the think it's too who close to the people who Is it close to the bone? The people who are complaining about the fact that it doesn't have a disclaimer are the people who don't want the story told in the way that the journalists, that the dramatists are telling it. It's not that they're complaining that it's about about real people. It's that they're complaining that they think other people 
not their intelligent, literate, well-read selves, are getting the wrong end of the stick. And this is just a usual thing about stupid people out there are doing stupid things, and I should set them right. So, Philippa, is it close to the bone? Do you think it's closer to the truth than perhaps those who people who are complaining don't realise? Well, since the Freedom of Information Act doesn't cover the royal palaces, there's no historian that can check it out. The fact-checking that's but done is... But it's private lives. How can it they're... be checked out? Because they're monarchs, because they're royal... But they're they still don't... private people. Their individuals have a right to privacy and to not have their private lives televised or made into factional documentaries which veer very far from the truth. Nobody has that right. I no, think we all have that right. But can we really what, argue what, uh, that about the royal what family, basis? Nadine? I mean, I mean, you know, we're talking about some of the yes, most you famous can argue people, that about their famous people lives. in the world. And, and what we're arguing now is whether it is a painful thing for the two brothers who lost who lost their mother. But that is 25 years well, ago. Well, Emily, you, ha you have they edited... They don't have to watch it if they don't want to. You have edited a big newspaper. And you know that there are... It's not necessarily written down in law sometimes, what, what, what one can write about. It's to do with... Uh, what, where the acceptable bounds are on the sport of it. And Netflix do, they trade in, they trade in a slightly dodgy way on this in that they try to do present this by making it so, such a facsimile of, and making the characters so lifelike, making them all sound like the real members of the royal family. They are trading on, on slightly half-truths there. And the real truth in this, the truth, the truth is not to do with who said what, when and where. It's to do with uh, aspects of character. And I think that the great truths in life are based on character. And we know what the character of the Queen was. We know what the character of King Charles is. And I think that the public will see through that. And the, the audiences will establish a truth of their own. I mean, I, I, my actual personal opinion is the Crown has done an enormous lot of good for the royal family, including King Charles, actually, because I think the portrayal of him as a young man was very sympathetic. And we saw okay. elements of him that maybe made us think when he feels a bit wooden or when we saw him at his accession, there was a moment when he got a little bit angry and a bit testy. There's that, that childhood scene when he sent off to Gordon Stern and his mother turning away from him, I think it made us realise what some of the sort of pressure of growing up in that in that family was. So maybe the argument is the royal family can't can't have it both ways. And it's ways. good for the royal firm in, in America as well. Quentin and Philippa, thank you so much. Two supporters of Just Stop Oil have covered Madame Tussauds waxwork model of King Charles III with chocolate cake today. The climate activists are demanding the government halts all new oil and gas licences and consents. Nadine, what do you make of this? Well, the Tarquins and the others were in Central Lobby in Westminster today up to similar antics. You know, it's, it's an indulgence. You know, we've been saying for a long time, we have to stop this. They disrupt everybody's lives. They stop ambulances getting to hospitals. They stop people getting to work. They stop children getting to school. They, they deface statues and, and monuments. They, they just have to stop. It's totally what is, unacceptable. What is your solution to climate change? Oh, well, COP26 was the most successful COP conference there has been held ever in the UK. I think there are plenty of better solutions And the objectives for 2025, the next era, are excellent. And are you continuing with the <laughs> COP26 resolutions? Yes, as well. I think it's well, all a we PR, have a new it's a PR put up by, by Madame Tussauds. They've always had a brilliant PR effort.